Quantum tunneling describes the process in which some particle circumvents the potential energy barrier of some transfer rearrangement and instead tunnels through the potential energy barrier. Tunneling usually occurs at low temperatures and only for particles with very high vibrational frequencies, things such as electrons and hydrogen protons. At high temperature limits, diabatic systems behave almost completely classically, so tunneling is not usually observed. To obtain a better understanding of what tunneling really does for a system, let's look at how electron transfer occurs classically. We can describe how electron transfer happens between two arbitrary atoms, called a donor and an acceptor pair, in a solution using Marcus theory, a visual representation of which should appear on screen now. Marcus theory states that electron transfer can occur efficiently in a non-adiabatic system when the harmonic oscillator potential energy surfaces of the two electron states intersect. Because tunneling usually occurs in adiabatic systems, or systems at low temperature limits, we need a different model to account for electron transfer rates that are greater than those predicted by Marcus theory. Sparing long complex mathematics behind it, we can essentially use perturbation theory to construct an energy gap Hamiltonian that describes our donor acceptor electron transfer. This energy gap Hamiltonian, which I will display on screen now, takes into account any overlap between the vibrational frequencies of the electron, donor, and acceptor pair. This model, in tandem with Marcus theory, can more accurately describe electron transfer rates at low temperatures. Tunneling occurs during vibrational wave function overlap and allows electron transfer rates to be higher than expected classically at those lower temperatures. Because tunneling has a dependence on the vibrational wave function, tunneling is strongly affected by the vibrational frequencies of a particle and such has strong ties to the kinetic isotope effect. Tunneling is also affected by certain catalysts that shorten the gap between donor acceptor pair wave functions, allowing tunneling to happen at a faster rate. The probability of finding tunneling in particle was described as below, where p equal to exponential of negative 4 a pi over h square root of 2 mv minus e, where v is the potential barrier is the kinetic energy, A is the thickness of the barrier, M is the mass of the particle, and H is the Planck constant. This equation states that the probability of tunneling to occur depends on the mass, the potential, and the kinetic energy. The probability will decrease as the mass of the object and the potential barrier is increased. Another way of saying this would be if the gap between the energy of the object and the energy of the barrier is high enough, there would be no tunneling. Since the mass of the object plays an important role in tunneling, the isotopic effect should also be considered. Compared between the hydrogen atom and deuterium, tunneling of the hydrogen atom transfer reactions would occur faster than a deuterium atom reactions due to having a smaller value of mass. A large isotope effect will also observe in tunneling reaction through a chemical reaction curve. According to the energy curve for chemical reactions, we could see the concept of tunneling um, as the reactant were passing through the barrier to form a product. At a lower temperature, the reactant was at its lowest possible state, which gave no energy to pass over the active state, therefore requirement of tunneling reaction to occur. When a particle is tunneling, the activated state will actually get reduced you from a negative slope. Another consideration in the tunneling chemical reactions is due to the difference in mass of the molecule. As mentioned above, the hydrogen reactions would have a faster reaction rate than the deuterium because the barrier wide tunneling of hydrogens was smaller than the deuterium, which then allowed the bonds to break easier, therefore result in the larger kinetic isotope effect. Quantum tunneling is when a subatomic particle passes through a potential barrier. This potential is greater than the kinetic energy of the particle, but depending on how thick the barrier is, the particle may or may not pass through, thus quantum tunneling. A particle's 
ability to tunnel is inversely proportional to the particle's mass. So an electron is a, has a greater probability than hydrogen, which would have a even greater probability than, say, benzene. So, let's imagine a box with a potential inside of it. And this potential is greater than the kinetic energy. And everywhere, everywhere else, the potential is zero. And let's say we have an electron at this energy level. And this electron has a low kinetic energy. As the electron approaches the barrier, the electron's probability decreases exponentially and diminishes to zero. So this electron cannot tunnel. But if we have an electron at a higher energy, then this one will decrease exponentially as well, but will make it past and show up on the other side. Since this electron had a higher kinetic energy, it was able to overcome the potential barrier and end up on the other side of the box. A catalyst can make this potential less than it was originally, thus making electron at energy level 1 able to pass through. Actually, that's very poorly drawn, so let me fix that up a bit. Make the potential even thinner. And this wave function makes it through. And the second electron will also make it through with even more probability of tunneling than even the electron and energy level one. With quantum tunneling being a phenomenon that is rarely observed, one would assume that it has no current use. However, this assumption would be wrong, but why? As stated before, quantum tunneling is the act of atomic particles such as electrons overcoming a potential barrier without having enough kinetic energy. This concept itself is the basis of a microscope known as a scanning tunneling microscope, or STM for short. An STM has a metal tip that it brings near the surface of some metal, leaving a gap between the two. This gap is roughly a nanometer across, so it's rather small. The metal tip and the metal are both connected to a voltage source that creates a current. This current passes from the metal tip to the metal surface and vice versa. Within that passing current are electrons that are essentially tunneling through an energy barrier. In this case, that energy barrier is the gap of space. As the metal tip travels across the surface of the metal, the current is maintained at a constant level, and so is the size of the gap of space mentioned before. To maintain these constants, the height of the metal tip is adjusted as changes on the surface of the metal such as bumps and dips, are detected. With this, an STM can produce a topographical map of the metal surface at an atomic level, giving a more observa observable use of quantum tunneling.